Morning. Welcome to the Drive to School podcast. I, again, am Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me this day is the president of Higher Things and I guess also pastor of Grace Lutheran Church in Grass Valley, California, Pastor Bomsch. How are you today? Doing very well. And yourself? I'm doing all right. Thanks for joining us in the morning. Uh, we are going to be tackling a segment called What's Coming Up in Church. And uh, inside of this, we're going to talk about, well, what's coming up in church. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that happens. And uh, what's wonderful if you get to actually sit down and study it is you see the depth of the riches of the gifts of God that are given to you every single Sunday. Uh, but if you are, well, just sort of tired because it was a long day or you haven't had a chance to think about it, some of these things can kind of slip past you. So uh, we're going to just sort of sit down every week and uh, talk with uh, Pastor Bombsh about one of the cool things that's coming up in church. So uh, Pastor, what's coming up in church on Sunday? Fun, fun stuff. Um, we out here in, in California are following the three-year series. So this coming Sunday is uh, the prodigal son uh, parable from Luke chapter 15, the great lost chapter, lost coin, lost sheep, uh, and lost son. So uh, it's, always, it's always a fun text when it comes around because uh, there's so much that you can dig into and a lot of things that you can dig through in the in the hymnal, especially in our hymnody, to to dovetail into the text and and talk about um, what it is that it means to be um, um, a a child of God, because that's ultimately the the point of that parable is is that the feast has been laid, the 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 the, the father is is loving and giving and wanting his, his sons together with him. Um, and, and where do we, where do we fall on that spectrum in a sense, you know, or that's kind of how it used to be in the old days. Are you the good son or are you the bad son? Well, what do you mean by a good son or a bad son? Right? Because the bad son turns out to be a good son. And then the <laughs> good son, we're not sure if he turns out to be good or if he turns bad right there at the end. I break that down for me. What do you mean by that? The bad son turns out to be the good son. Uh, well, if, if you're familiar with the, with the parable, the, the, there's, there is a, there is a father, right? This is what, this is what, uh, what, uh, there was a man who had two sons, uh, Jesus says, and the younger says, father, give me my share of the property that's coming to me, which, um, in those days, you know, if you're going to subdivide the property among among the heirs, that means you're dead. You are dead. That's when the property gets divided. So the, the younger son says, hey, dad, drop dead so I can get my inheritance, which um, I don't know. Your parents don't generally groove on their kids saying, Drop dead. dead that's me. that's yeah. that's usually that's usually a a uh, reason for some sort of some sort of punishment or restriction of privileges, right? Um, but the father does the totally unexpected thing and says, "All right, we're going to divide it up." The older son, you know, your older brother, who's the good kid because he's hanging around and he's working the working the farm. He gets two thirds, you get one third, and I'm just kind of going to hang out here till I'm really dead now because nothing belongs to me anymore. And then he goes off and he wastes all of the money in, in profligate living, you know, kind of like lottery winners sometimes do. You know, they, they get, come into a giant pile of money and all of a sudden it's gone. Um, and he, he comes to his senses out there amidst the pigs, um, which, you know, again is a way of, a way that Jesus really drives home the point that just how this felt. man has, yeah, he's come to the end of it. He's feeding pigs, which for Jews is not something they would do. Unclean animals. You're not going to associate with them. You're not going to get anywhere close to them. And he's wanting to root around in the, in the slop trough just to find something to eat. And so he says, I got to go home. Because maybe, just maybe, I can work my way back into the family. If I prove to my dad I'm a good kid, I can maybe start in the servants' quarters and then maybe get back into the house. Yeah, even, my... The servants' quarters are better than the pig trough. I mean, right, 
Yeah. You're, you're at least you're, yeah, you're out of the big sty, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, so he comes back and then he realizes um, when dad just, again, does the completely unexpected thing because the father is a, he's a landowner. Uh, he's a member of the community. So he's got grown sons. So he's going to be someone who's respected and respected men in this culture um, there are things that they don't do. You're not emotional and you, oh, and you never, you never run anywhere. Mm -hmm. You walk. If people Strat need to run, they will, they will run to you. Right. Yeah. I like it. And, but what does he do? He, and, and the other, the other unexpected thing he's doing somewhere in the midst of this too, is he's, he's obviously waiting because he knows his kid's coming back. Because he sees yeah. him in the distance. Jesus says he sees him in the distance and he runs to him. And there's a couple of reasons that he's going to run to him. And, and one of them is to protect his health, protect his life. Because the whole town has been, or the, uh, the credibility and the, the standing of this entire village has been besmirched by this kid. Mm -hmm. Because he's, he wants his dad to drop dead. He takes the money and runs and he wastes it all. And he comes back and dad knows that if he shows his face, they're going to kill him. And so he runs to him and he throws his arms around him and, and protects him basically. And so this kid's rehearsed speech, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to prove that I'm a good kid. And I'm going to, you know, I've, I'm going to work my way back in and, and, and please forgive me, all comes to a stop. Yeah. Because the dad just says, you are my son. We're going to have a feast. You've returned to me. It's just mercy. All mercy, all love. Um, and so, so that, he's and not that, known according to any of those things, just according to the father's mercy. According to the father's mercy. The, the father forgets everything he's done. That makes him good. He gets it all. And he says, you are my son. We're having a feast. Let's go because you were dead and now you're alive. Right. And all that matters is you're alive and you're here with me and we're going to celebrate. And then there's this, this good brother who is going to maybe turn out to be not so good because they're going to have this, this fellowship meal rooted around the forgiveness of sins, which kind of sounds like something we might be doing on a Sunday. Um, but he's got of. a problem with sinners being there amazing isn't it uh, yeah the yeah he, and he, he even says you know i've been so good all these years i've done everything you want me to do i didn't run off and spend my money on you know what is it he how does he know what the what his brother spent all this money on right <laughs> i've that's fair and he and he even says uh but when this son of yours now, my brother, this son of yours, uh, my brother, this son of yours, who devoured your property with prostitutes. Now, how does he know what he did with the money? Small town, I guess people talk. Man, it could, and, and it could well uh -huh. be. It could well be. But it could also be this son of yours, not my brother, is a terrible person. And I'm sure this is what he did. Uh -huh. um, uh, there could be a little bit of... Uh, eighth commandment issue there going on maybe seems like um this is what i imagine he had done um and he's and, you know uh, you never let me do anything around here you never let me have any fun you never let me kill a goat and have a party none of this stuff and and the father says well you've always been in my house everything that i have is yours this is all yours are you going to come in and, and join the feast and it just drops. We don't know if he goes in or not. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of sort of the fourth wall break where, you know, Jesus turns and looks at you kind of through there and says, well, are you coming in or not? Um, that's so kind of a cool place to leave it, though, because, I mean, then what happens after the sermon on Sunday? And that's exactly it. The table is set. Huh. The, the, the feast is here. You know, are you are you going to come and receive 
uh, with, with great joy and thanksgiving, the feast that the Father is set for all of those sinners that are sitting in all of those pews all around you. Hmm. That's a Sunday worth going to. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So uh, that's something to look forward to coming up this Sunday. We have a, a, a meal set uh, rooted around the forgiveness of sins where the Father is merciful both to the ones who sin you know or talk about and yours. Uh, that's, that's the kind of meal we need to be at. We call that Holy Communion. Um, and uh, thanks be to God that he would feed us sinners this way. Uh, Pastor Bombs, thanks so much for coming to the drive to school and uh, telling us what's coming up on Sunday. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right. Have a great one. You do the same.